Hello, everybody. Who is out there? And who's got puppies? We're talking puppies today. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes, everybody. They're amazing. So welcome, welcome, everybody. We are talking puppies, but if you don't have a puppy, don't turn away. Because here's the thing about raising an amazing puppy. It's all about the F-U-N, the fundamentals, the layers of learning and how you approach that. That's going to be a benefit to anybody, to and somebody with a rescue dog, to somebody who's working through a struggle with your own dog, to somebody who just wants to bring more fun and engagement to your dog. So this is appropriate for everybody. However, if you have a puppy... This is perfect timing. I have a question for all of you who have a puppy right now. I would like you to answer this question for me. And it's this one. If I had some magic like powder that I could sprinkle on you and it would allow you to know exactly what you have to do um, so that your puppy will grow into the dog that you dream of that you'd be able to do all these amazing things. What would be the three top things that you would love to be able to do with your puppy once they are grown and trained? So, um, and if you are getting a puppy, time to start planning now. What are your, 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 what's your wish, wish list of things you would like to do? Like to be able to do. Because for example, some people, um, the, you know, the, the thought of taking the puppy to family Christmas is like, no, that wouldn't happen. My puppy is too out of control. He would never be welcome there. So what, um, oh, Jose has got two puppies, six months and 18 months. Hello from Finland. Hello from South Africa. Hello right back at you. So Quinn says number one would be dog agility. And uh, same thing. <gasps> Sandra, getting a puppy. It, uh, next week, nine week old puppy. I'm jealous. A, a nine week old Aussie. Um, Uli has an eight month old Aussie. So uh, ability to take her anywhere, be my amazing companion, run with me, do sports with me, agility. Um, Amanda, number two is camping, hiking, swimming. I like how your name numbing them. So Amanda, remember number one was agility. Number two, camping, hiking, swing, swimming. We have to hold to see what Amanda's number number three is. Um, Shaman is go hiking and camping. A lot, lot of similarities. I asked Mackenzie on our team who has a young puppy what her three were. And guess what? Hiking, camping was on her list, as was agility. Um, Quinn, loose leash walking, fetch in an open field. Deb says, be a therapy dog. I love this. Such a diverse a group here. Diverse list of wishes uh want to do agility with my dogs it will help burn off their energy um hey from austria and petra says to be calm fetch sports this is very very specific from tilly mintball um, I'm thinking that's a, a, a accumulation of your dog's names. If it's, it would be an unfortunate last name. If it's T Tilly Mintball, not that I'm judging. Um, not barking aggressively at other dogs, not barking, not biting tall men dressed in black uh, and being able to be left alone. So these are huge. I mean, there's things that you don't consider. To, and I love, keep keep adding to this list, guys. Here's the Here's the thing that, um, if you're not intentional about what it is you would like, if without a destination, guess where you end up? You end up lost. That's where you end up. So I don't care if you haven't got your new puppy yet, you're getting your new puppy, you have a new puppy, you have a new puppy and you didn't start thinking about the, these things. The more intentional you can get about where you're headed, the easier it will be to get there. The next thing that's going to be really, really important is that you have a, um, some goals with some deadlines on it. So today I'm going to share with you a list of things that are that I intentionally 
work through with my puppies when I get a new puppy. I'm going to share with you what the biggest mistake people make with their puppies. I'm also going to share, uh, obviously, for our birthday celebration, we have all of our classrooms op open. I'm going to share what I think would be the most appropriate for your puppy based on where you'd like to be one year from now. Um, and also going to give away some stuff. So I'm going to start by giving away prizes from yesterday. So we have uh, the winner of be a package of be kind stickers so these are we have them everywhere these are like they stick on everything we, we actually put them in the dishwasher the not the stickers the things that they're stuck on and they stay they, like that's been on for more than a year so be kind stickers we're going to send a package of five of these stickers to randy gunn congratulations and the zentech cooling mat you're gonna love this Zoe Marie, you are winning the Zentech cooling mat. And also from yesterday, we have from the good people at For My Morals, we have um, a tug toy that, I mean, I just love their tug toys. They're vast and varied. Go and check their website. There's a lot of different ones. If you go to the Dog Zat tab, you'll see some with our branding on them. If you want them that say Dog Zat or Recallers or Handling 360, you can go there and see that. So this is the gem. From yesterday's live, if you didn't see yesterday's live and you do have a new puppy, I strongly encourage you to go back and listen to that one after this one. So here is the gem. In order to reach the dog and bring out their best, we have to help them emotionally be at their best. In order to help them emotionally be at their best, we have to examine what burdening ourselves, we, we have for ourselves, that it's time to put down. This is my top gem. Um, from this live and you are so right joining your programs has helped me tremendously to identify my past mistakes with my dog which we were make which we were making him more and more reactive all the tools provided here have helped me work on reversing the situation and i noticed a great improvement in my connection with my dog and that contributes to his lower reactivity so i love that gem there's so many great gems yesterday we're gonna have more prizes given out today um, but to get your prizes just contact the team at wag at dogs that.com and they're gonna tell you how you're gonna win a prize so we'll start right off right now i'm gonna give away two prizes and i'm gonna give away a let's give away a um oh i know a restore these are can you grab me the there's a restore somewhere loose around here chelsea um it it's it's memory foam and it goes on top of the climbs. Now, if you don't have a climb, you should get one from the good people at um, Blue Nine. But you can just bring over the whole, oh, you can bring over the whole thing if it's already on the climb. So the the restore, it's a mat that can go on top and connect and be like one whole little piece with your climb with your climb. But it also, if you have uh, if you get a double restore, they actually can go on like just a Coleman dog, um, like the fold up dog beds. They, they go really nicely on those. So we're going to give away a restore mat and that we will give away uh, at the end of today. And it's going to go away to anybody who shares this super important live all about raising a puppy in Dooland. And if you followed my programs, if you followed my podcast, you know that Dooland is a place where you're raising a puppy from a place of kindness and, and you know, it, it intentional, intentionally raising with games that make that puppy love their life. So this is a double restore mat. We're going to give away a single one of these ones today. So they're memory foam. And guess what? I have had little mats on them myself. So... So I'm going to give away one of those at the end of today. We're also going to give away five um, Be Kind stickers. You know what? We're going to give away the Be Kind stickers today. And we're going to give away the Restore Mat. I'll go live on Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon will be a really fun day for me to go live. And I'll tell you why on Sunday because I'll be fasting. So I'll be sharp as a tack. <laughs> or a little crazy, a little delirious. I'm not sure, but I'll be there for you. Um, so we're going to give away the restore, the store on, on Sunday, and we're going to give away five more Be Kind stickers today. All you have to do is share this on your social media, uh, Facebook, on Instagram, on, on Twitter, anywhere, saying, um, you know, come and watch this live with Susan Garrett, all about raising a puppy in Dooland. Come on back here, write in the comments that you shared it, 
and so that our team can find out where you shared it, put where, and if it's a different ID than what you're registered here on today's live, let us know the name of your, your Facebook page or, or Instagram, wherever it's being shared. Okay, so send send it over, share it now, earn, win a restore and or be kind stickers. That's all. It's random. It's just random draw. Okay, so it's all about um, about the the intentional layers that we have to raise our puppies, and and I've been doing this for a very very long time, not just raising my own puppies, which I actually raised other people's puppies before I ever owned a puppy of my own, which was a phenomenal experience, and. Over the past 30 years, I've had tens of thousands of students with puppies come through our programs. So I have seen just about every breed you can think of. I have helped so many different uh, challenges that people were really felt like they were bogged down with, with a, a puppy challenge. And guess what? It's never really quite as bad as it feels like when you're in the midst of it, which is why if you watch my um, YouTube video that was posted today, about when you're feeling like you got the puppy blues, it's really just important to stay present and focus on what you can control. So um, if you've been on any of my podcast episodes and been on my lives, I have a helper. I have a helper here now. Um, I, you know, you've heard me talk about the 5C pyramid. And when we are raising a puppy, this should be like, like you should screen cap this. Right here, I'll just get my... It's screen cap, Susan Garrett's. Uh, oh, the other way, Susan Garrett's. Oh, come on, there. Which one? I can't do this. <laughs> I'm not getting it right. Boom. So I got into this five C pyramid. So when we're raising a puppy, every step along the way, we want to grow that puppy's confidence. And really, there should be an S before the five C. Number one thing we want to do, puppy comes into your new home and you want them to feel safe. No harm's going to come from you. Everything here we're going to do is going to be building your confidence. So confidence can't come in an environment where that puppy doesn't feel safe. So number one is we've got to grow safety. Then once the puppy feels safe and then we can do games that connect with that puppy. So there's a lot of puppy games that I have that um, will help you to connect with the puppy. Number two is then we want to teach them really specific things. So we want to grow the criteria through clarity. One little piece of a behavior at a time. We're not going to lump it. We're just going to grow clarity so they have understanding because that grows more and more confidence. And then we kind of ping pong between um, the connection, the, the clarity, the confidence, then we throw in a challenge. So often people, they get a puppy, they go to puppy class, guess what? Challenge is number one. You get them, um, you might get grow some safety at home, and then you go, we're going off to puppy class to learn something. And they're thrown in the deep end of the pool with all this challenge of, of, of maybe there, there's somebody talking on a speaker, maybe there's other puppies around. So we need to, number one, make them feel safe, play these games that help them connect with us, show them the clarity of the things we need them to learn that they so that they can be successful in anything we want. And then we were going to, then grow their confidence back and forth between clarity, confidence, clarity, confidence with, with the big base of our pyramid is going to be the connection. Does that make sense to you guys? I know this isn't the first time you've heard this from me, that it is, it is something that I've talked about for, for like many, many podcasts. It's so important that five, five C pyramid. Now the biggest mistake that puppy owners, that new puppy owners make, if I, I'm going to get to that in a second. Yesterday or on um, Wednesday, I had a live and I spoke about um, if you're having a challenge with your dog, if there's failure, it, it always comes down to skill, will, or environment. So did you, it, it, did you empower the dog or the puppy with the skill to make the choices you would like to see them make? What... What happens, and there's several mistakes that puppy owners make. Here's the first one. Expectations are here. A lot of that I'm going to blame on Disney. And 
puppy's capabilities are here. So there's a big gap between what you expect and what the puppy's capable of. And that gap is what creates disappointment and, and, and frustration. You become frustrated with your puppy and you're disappointed in their actions. Their capabilities, your expectations, we need that reversed. We need whatever their capabilities of, basically nothing. Your expectations should be slightly below that. That's a formula for happiness, success, and you motivating them to, to connect with you and have a better relationship. So puppies fail. They don't meet your expectation because of their skill, current capabilities, their willingness to do what you want. And this is, again, what people put their hands on their head, on their hips and say, what did you do? Like, I did what a normal puppy would do. I pooped. I peed. I used my mouth inappropriately. And I used my voice to let you know I want something. That's my list of my capabilities that I come with. That's it. Sadly, you know, Disney thinks, makes us think that puppies are all bouncy and joyful and big, <laughs> wet, slippery uh, kisses on your cheek. And, you know, you might get a, occasional glimpses of that. But reality is you get the poop, you get the pee, you might even get occasional vomit, a chewed briefcase. Um, the capabilities aren't there. So skill, will, or environment. And so what we need to do is make sure that we are building connection with the gate with the puppy and that and that happens through intentionally layering um i'm going to i'm going to give you my formula all right so it's the it's an ac and it's an acronym that makes zero sense but you know it's an acronym all right so it's sne i'll get to the end later number 1 Raising a puppy in Doolan, a, la a place where we're growing the connection through growing the uh, confidence by creating clarity every step of the way, by making sure our expectations are well below whatever we believe our, dog our puppy's capabilities are, socializing. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I'm going to share with you what socializing isn't. Socializing isn't making sure your puppy has puppy friends. It's not. All your puppy needs to do is be around all kinds of people and kids and other dogs, adult dogs, puppies, that they can learn to, that they're just part of the white noise in the environment. If a puppy, if you get an opportunity where you have a really, uh, another puppy you know is safe or an adult dog you know is safe that your puppy can meet, I wouldn't just say, you've got a puppy, I've got a puppy, let them meet because Bad things can happen. Socializing means that the puppy is stable in these environments. So at first it might be that you can just play games of tug and interact, interactive games with you. And definitely they need, you want them not to be afraid. Remember, safety goes below connection. Safety in all environments is our number one for our puppies. So socializing is the first number. Uh, the next one, our SNA, is nutrition. And I'm not going to go too deep in nutrition as well. If you um, go to my podcast, I do talk a little bit about nutrition when I talk about uh, my dog, this. Um, I do feed raw. All I'm going to say is healthy nutrition feeds more than one protein source. You don't mix them all, but you want your dog to have a very diverse biome, which means they get exposed to at least five to seven different sources of protein throughout the year. And it, and it could be a month on one protein source and a month on another. Also, if you choose not to feed raw and you're going to feed kibble, buy the smallest bags you can because once you open a bag of kibble, it immediately starts to ox uh, oxidate, which means you have potential to create um, problems with your dog. Don't buy the biggest one because it's cheapest. You want to buy the smallest or at the very least buy, if you're buying a big one, vacuum seal it into small, smaller containers. Um, I always tell my, my students, you buy the best nutrition that you can afford. All right. Our next E is the environment. You need to understand puppies fail because of skill, will, or environment. Our goal in creating that connection and the clarity and the confidence is 
that we eliminate the distraction value of the environment by raising the value of the things you want the dog to do with you. So uh, we get a transfer of value from the things the dog loves, tug games and food, interaction, all comes through you or things you want. For example, I want to transfer a value to a crate so that my puppy feels completely comfortable sleeping in a crate at night. That they, if, and if, um, heaven forbid, at some point in their life, they have to spend an overnight at a veterinarian's office, they're not going to stress. There's going to be no anxiety because of the transfer of value that I put in when they were wee puppies. All right. So I, I put that in. That's their environment starts with what we can control. That means my puppy doesn't come into the house and have access to this big, huge house of mine. They have their raised in an X pen, what we call the gated communities. So they're, they're, they spend some time in a crate, sometimes in a gated community, of course, a lot of time out with us and then their puppies. So guess what? Probably 18 hours a day, they're sleeping. So environment is intentional. Because as I mentioned right, right at the beginning, if you are not aware, skill, will, environment, guess what happens? Without a transfer of value, the environment always wins. Without that transfer of value. So if you have a dog who loves to swim and you are out walking and they see a pond, they're gone. Unless there's a transfer of value through you that they understand the pond is yours they don't actually go for a swim until you give them permission and every time i see that word my dog keeps looking at me with her ears twisting like are we really going so without the transfer of value and that's what you're doing intentionally raising your puppy with these layers that i'm talking about today without that transfer of value environment always wins this is the single biggest mistake people make with their puppies because let me share with you your puppy is always being trained. They are either being coached by you or coached by their environment. So I, my job in my programs is to help show all of my students how to be the coach of their puppy's life or their dog's life. Because if you are not, they are getting trained by the environment. And see point number one, environment always wins. Always, unless you get that transfer of value. So it's intentional what we're doing with our puppies here. It's intentional. So we, we, we've got our, um, our, our snee. Now we're going to go to our snee. Because the next thing I want you to really focus on with your puppy is emotional co-regulation. Puppies come with virtually no regulation. I mentioned this in a podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. Puppies are born with, they don't even have the ability to regulate their own body, body temperature. And, you know, by the time they come into your home, they don't have the ability to regulate their bladder. They don't have the ability to regulate, you know, um, when and where they poop. They're getting there. And it can happen really, really fast. But you need to co-regulate a lot of their um a lot of their, well, of course, their urination and, and defecation programs or schedules, but also their, their ability to feel excited and not bite you in the face, their ability to uh, see so something, be a little afraid and recover. So you as a puppy owner is going to recognize what your dog's emotional state and you're going to help co-regulate by either you know, moving them if they're afraid of a dog, you know, there's a dog lunging at the, as you're walking down the, the sidewalk, you're not going to walk your puppy by that lunging dog. You might cross the street for the first week. Then they, they learn that that dog's not going to be a problem. Maybe then you just walk with a dog on the outside. So co your emotional co-regulation means you're not going to just cut the puppy's nails. You are going to, what we do is teach a relaxation protocol. And then we use that to help introduce different husbandry. All right, so emotional co-regulation and then E, right, or SNEE is engagement. And that is how you start to create a bond with your puppy through choice-based games. That's my favorite. That's in all the puppies I've ever raised. That is number one. It does so many things because it also, it's teaching a puppy how to make good choices in their environment. It's helping to build more value for the things, the choices you want. 
And it's helping them learn to self-regulate, which is our goal when raising a puppy. We want to move them away from being co-regulating to self-regulation. Okay, now enrichment. And this is something that a lot of puppies get missed out on because people think, especially if they've um, been a member of our crate games program, oh, I just put my puppy in the crate and then I just take them out every you know, couple hours, do something with them and put them back in the crate. Puppies need enrichment. We need to stimulate their brains and body. So it's enrichment that might stimulate tactile, their, what they're feeling, um, they're feeling on their paws, different environment, environmental conditions, doing little um, things that, that are stimulating new thoughts, process, new, opening new synapses in their brains. We want to do things that it is enriching them mentally. So um, puppy bombs, I've spoke about many, many times, with toilet paper rolls that we st stuff cookies in and let them shred them. There's interactive games like um, uh, Nina uh, Olderson's Ol Ol um, puppy puzzles. There's so many things that, but it's how you use this enrichment. Uh, it's not just, you know, for you to be entertained as well with a puppy. It's a puppy, again, to help to learn to self to self-regulate through uh, enrichment games. The next E is education. And this is, <clears throat> unfortunately, people's expectations is that the puppies are brilliant when they arrive or that they'll just naturally morph into brilliance. It's got to be intentional. You have that list of those three things that you want to do with your puppy a year from now, then you need to be intentional about creating what creating that list. Um, there's a, um, a great book called Atomic Habits. And in that book, the author talks about a study um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a psychological, a psychology study that was done. I don't know if it was intentional. Um, in the book, he talks about it being a photography class, but then truthfully it was a ceramics class, but the professor said, there's, um, all your marks is going to be dependent on one thing that this half of the room, you're going to submit your three best pieces of ceramic and I will grade you on those three best pieces. This half of the room, you're going to submit 100 pieces of ceramic. And I don't care what it is. If you get 100, I'm going to give you a grade. And so at the end of the year, the people that were tasked in the book, it said three, the three best photos, um, those three photos were nowhere near as good as the 100 other photos. And why is that? Because the people that were trying to do three things were, were overanalyzing, perfecting, making sure that it was everything was just perfect before they said that was good enough. Where the people who were su submitting 100 photos, they were just saying, oh, that's good. And then they'd look at that and go, I can do better. And the next one was a little better. And the next one was a little better. And the next one was a little better. What's that got to do with puppy raising? Because you can't get to where you want to be intentionally unless you get into the habit of interacting and in, in creating educational moments every single day of your puppy's life. And the only way I found it successful for myself and the only way I've ever seen follow through be um, at the highest level with my students is if that education comes in the form of a game that you love to play and your puppy loves to play with you. So bar none, in my 30 plus years as a professional dog trainer, the, the only the best way to create education is through games. All right. And the next E is exercise. And funny enough, a lot of when I, I speak to people who are getting who've gotten their first puppy, that's the first thing they're concerned with. Oh, I, I got to take them to the park. I got to get them exercise. I got you know what? If you are doing engagement, enrichment, education, um, co-regulation with your puppy, Exercise isn't that is pretty much taken care of for the first few weeks or a month. You don't really ever have to think about exercising that puppy until they're much, much older, you know, maybe four or five or six months old. You're going to get that puppy exercise through the, the, the game, the education based in games where they're, they're running and tugging and doing all sorts of amazing things with you. So it's funny that that's often one that people think of first, but it really isn't that important when you have a new puppy and the sleep our p is positivity and that is to make sure any challenge that you're faced with you face it from a place of positivity that you know our puppy's always doing the best they can with the education that you've given them in the environment you put them in and remember if you haven't got that transfer of value who wins who wins tell me
tell me in the comments who's going to win. If you haven't got the transfer of value, then what is the likelihood that the puppy is going to make the right choice? Uh, thank you, Robin. Environment. Environment is always going to win. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you every time. If we haven't got that transfer value, how, how are we going to get it? Okay. Price and pride. How do we, how do you train a puppy that isn't good motivated? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, but all puppies can be motivated. It's just going back a different layer, a different layer, a different layer. Um, and I think a lot of the times there is a, um, people kind of jump the gun a little bit. She might need to go out, Chelsea. So um, in, in all of our programs, so um, for me, certainly how I train my dog is all in our recallers program. If you've got a new puppy and there's any way, shape or form, you can join recallers. We have all of our classrooms open. That, I promise you, is the express lane, the express lane to getting your puppy to become the dog of your dreams. Because we give you the plan, we give you the strategy, and then we coach you for a year to make sure it happens. So um, that that is by far the, the best. Now, what that does is it gives it gives you the games. There's 40, 41 games in there now that um, and more to come as well as other, other things in there, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that right now. We do also have, um, this is a book that I've never, I've never shared anywhere other than I, um, with one group, I did a webinar for them. So, um, it's called 10 quick tips for puppy raising success. And I decided that anyone who joins any one of our programs today, um, and the team will put the link in at dogsat.com forward slash, uh, celebrate that anybody who joins any one of our programs today, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that you get that booklet. All right. All right. So, so that is, that, that is the, the, the framework to which I'm making sure I tick all my boxes, socializing and nutrition. So, you know, what, what needs to happen next? Do, are there, are there any behavior problems? So, Increase fear or uh, in hyper arousal. I might look at nutrition uh, to for those challenges or dogs that don't seem or seem more worried. I would, I you know, there's always there's always you know what kind of upbringing do those puppies have. But all things being equal, I would definitely look at that next. Okay, so here are some of the progressions that I how how I'm raising and training my puppy and. Um, I have also put together, I put this together, I think in, um, 1994 or five, it's called the puppy pyramid. And, um, I've asked my team if it's in our programs and it isn't. So I'm going to, um, update it and I'm going to put it into recallers. That's my commitment. So I'll put the other one in all the programs. This one I'm going to just put in, into recallers. And what it is, is um, you see it's like a pyramid. So pyramid one at the base layer is everything that would happen from seven to 10 weeks that I would want to do with my puppies for seven to 10 to 10 weeks. All right. So um, that puppy pyramid, it, it kind of looks like, like this. I'm going to just get rid of that. Uh, here we go. So first are the first cues that I teach a puppy. And those are, uh, um, location specific, uh, reinforcement markers. So it should be an L location specific reinforcement markers. So it would be things like, um, search, which tells my puppy, look for the floor, look to the floor. I'm going to toss a cookie on the floor or cookie, which means stay where you're, you know what? My grandfather, my, my grandparents are from Newfoundland and Newfoundlanders, they have a different way of, uh, different dialect. So when I'm just about, I just thought of my grandfather. So he would, so cookie means stay there and I'm going to deliver the cookie. 
my grandfather, when I would call him to pick me up from the store, he would say, stay where you're at till I come where you're to. Stay where you're at till I come where you're to. So I don't know why I brought that one up. It just um, reminded me of stay where you're at and uh, I'll bring you the cookie. So location-specific reinforcement markers. I tell my puppy that this is how you're going to get your reinforcement right now. It's either going to come on the floor, it's going to be delivered to your mouth, or it's going to be, you know, tug. You can grab the toy. Those three things, my, my puppy will learn those the first day they're here, right? And then, you know, there'll be other cues we learn gradually, but I want the puppy to realize. Now, I'll say search, and they'll look to the floor. I won't have to throw it yet. Once they lurk, I'll throw in the direction of their, of their look. And then the next thing, it's bond developing games. So it's games with a tug toy is what I play next. Chase games where they're chasing me um, that are building. When I say a bond, what they're really also doing is helping a puppy to understand what their name is. Because so many people, another big mistake people make is they poison their puppy's name. Meaning, if I say my puppy's name, I absolutely know for the first two weeks, I will never say their name unless I can grab their collar and give them a cookie. If they're not on a leash or in a small area with me where I can grab their collar and give them a cookie, then I'm, or I'm going to run away from them and I know they're going to chase me so that I can grab their collar and give them a cookie. That's the only time I'm going to say their name. And then from then on out, I'm taking a risk. If I say my puppy's name, what do I want them to do? I want them to head whip and look at me. Therefore, I'm not going to say their name and then them when they're in the middle of digging in the garden or they're in the middle of playing and the chances of them listening to me is so low because then I'm teaching them your name has options. It means if nothing better in your life is going on, come and see me. I don't want my puppies to learn that. So big mistake a lot of puppy people make is they poison the name. In my bond developing games, they learn your name always means you need to, to hightail it, but flying come to me, right? Then there's husbandry gains. And that's where I mentioned that we um, did things with belief, like um, teaching her, this is her. There's a nail. Good. I'm gonna go baby girl. I think I'm gonna stop. No, that's a good night. Well done. That was good. So, so, so that was a five month, I think she's four month, four or five month old puppy that um, she was learning to be relaxed, to have her nails cut. And you could see when we said game's over break, she went, I want you to cut my nails more because I like this. And that's what we want is we want to play these husbandry games that the puppy learns, you can cut my nails, you can clean my ears, you can brush me, you can bath me, and everything's really, really good. That's what we want. That's what we're heading for, all right? Um, and then we're going to add games that help the puppy self-regulate emotionally. What do I mean by that? So somebody had mentioned, what about my dog, my puppy who isn't motivated, uh, very motivated? I think that's what they meant. And um, so these Emotional regulation games help the puppy to get more excited because it's very difficult to train a, a puppy when they're just, they're just not, they're not excited. They're like, oh yeah, he's going to sniff something on the floor. I see a leaf falling over there. It's, it, you can't really train them. So what we have to do is help them to, to um, self-regulate through games so that they can get up, so that they can be focused. So you can train them. You will have more success once this happens, right? So we have emotional uh, regular, And if we have the opposite end of the spectrum, like we have some dogs that are so excited about training and with puppies, it can happen super fast. I remember my, my dog, Buzzy, he, I remember it was an event. I believe he was 14 or 15 weeks old. The first time either my late husband or I ever saw him lie down on his own outside of a kennel. He just didn't. He was so, so crazy. So high, right? He, as a puppy, he just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And so through him, I started my first game to help them to regulate to a place where they can be more thoughtful and play games with us.
All right, so it's both ends of the spectrum, uh, emotional regulation games. All right, recaller games. I mentioned there's 41 of them. Some of them are in the bond developing games. Some of them are in the emotional regulation uh, game. But there's all these recaller games that help build the puppy's understanding that and conditioning that the environment is white noise. The environment isn't your trainer, that I am the one you're bonded with and I am your trainer. So that's what Recaller Games does for you and your puppy. It, it conditions the puppy so that they gain environmental neutrality. So if there's another dog walking by, they might glance, oh, hey, Fred, yeah, how's it going? But they're not going to react. They're not going to go, oh my God, I must meet this dog. They're going to go, yeah, you're white noise. The kids on the bicycle, the, the skateboards, the, they might see something like the big swimming hole that they would like to go swimming in. And they might go, uh, did, you, did you see that over there? But if you're walking in that direction, they go, oh, we're not going today? Okay, cool. That's what we call our games give you, all right? And then games like loose leash walking, which are again, part of recallers. We have uh, loose, loose, loose leash walking games. We also have retreat games, which is a separate course, but still we put it all in a, as part of recallers. And then a lot of you off the top said, I have goals to do dog diving, to do dog agility, to do obedience, and to do rally, to do a therapy dog. All of those I would call sport specific, although you wouldn't call therapy dog sport. But there's there once you've got the base above, all of the sport specific things, they go like dominoes. You're, you, would, you would say, I've never had a dog that has been so easy to train in sport X because of that foundation that you have had have above. So that's what makes the difference. Does this make sense to you guys? <clears throat> Do you guys understand where I'm going? Like these are, these are the, lump, the lumps that we've done. That's creating the behaviors in a puppy. Now you might have a 10 month old puppy that you've missed out on all of this. Guess what? It's not too late. This is your new ground zero day. It starts today. And you're going to just go back in and fix the layers that are broken. Thank you. Yes. So Heidi says, yes, this makes sense. Do you have questions there for me at all, Chelsea? Okay. Um, so the question, my tip, my dog runs off and won't come back. Um, and do you have any tips on recall? All of this above. So if you think of things like my dog doesn't listen when there's a, a bitching season, my dog doesn't come back. If there's kids in the park, my dog, think of these, my dog won't bring back a toy. My dog shreds pillows. My dog knocks over my grandmother. All of these are isolated behaviors. But behavior doesn't happen in a vacuum. Behavior is a way of going. Behavior is life. And so what you need to do is start and create the intentional bonds so that environment isn't the trainer. You are the trainer. It's not, dog training is not about teaching sit, down, come, in an, in an a sterile environment. That is not what dog training is about. Sit down, stand are all just gifts that you get when you create these intentional bonds through games like recallers, right? So all of that is easy. Um, so great question, Sarah. Would you go uh, follow the same steps with an adult rescue? Absolutely, that's what we did with tater salad. Tater salad, um, the bulldog cross, came to us when he was 15 months old and he was a hot mess. Um, he was, it was entertaining, but we just started right at the beginning. We had to, we changed his name. And if you have a re rescue dog, I strongly recommend changing the dog's name. Ex There's only one time I wouldn't. And that is if he was a well-beloved, maybe an elderly person who passes away and then, the puppy or the dog gets given up for rescue, then there may be some amazing and strong bonds there that you might want to make him feel safe through that name. 99%, 99.9% of the dog, any rescue dogs that I brought in, that's the first thing I do is I change their name. Even if I know that they weren't abused, they just, the family got too busy changing the name. 
Um, uh, I'm doing homeschool the dog with my puppy. Should I start recolors too? Kay, right into the team and they'll know, like they'll tell you how far along you are. Definitely you want to get in recolors and this might be a good time, but the, the my coaches will tell you if, if you know if you should do it now or or wait um, for later. There's a couple of questions on the book. Um, if they joined yesterday, can they still get the book? Oh, that's a great question. If you joined yesterday, do you still get access to the um, to the 10, 10, 10 tip, quick ten quick tips for puppy raising success? And the answer is yes. As well, we're putting in this journal um, on acquired bite inhibition, getting better bite inhibition from your puppies. All right. Um, that's going to be in the library too. The puppy pyramid is going to take, because I'm going to refresh that, and I, it will be only in recallers, and I will make a commitment. It will be there before Christmas. But, um, you know, I wrote that, and I have tweaked it along the way, but I haven't looked at it recently. Okay, so... If you look at those three things that you wanted, how are you going to get there? How are you going to, how are you going, like, what is your path? How, what are those layers look like for you right now? So here's what we have. We do have homeschool the dog, which normally, um, so homeschool the dog and wag nation. Wag nation is where we teach you one trick a month as well as one dog training lesson and homeschool the dog is, if you just want an introduction to games, there's there's 12 of them in here. So normally that is $417 together. And just for this week, for my birthday, it's $97. And what I mentioned before, in recallers, you get one year of recallers. And that includes a lot of extra little courses, you know, courses on uh, loose leash walking, courses on teaching your dog to bring back a toy. Um, so this is puppy nirvana. Recallers is... It's, is puppy nirvana. If you have a puppy, no matter what age, if you're not um, in recallers, I promise you, no matter how well behaved or how great the training is, you will get to a different level and you will go, oh, I get why she wanted me to join this program. All right. And then there's other thing. Uh, Handling 360 is we do have people who join with their puppy. I, I encourage you, though, to do recallers first. If you've done recallers, your puppy can, you can start, there's a puppy path in Handling 360 where we don't get you on equipment, where we do a lot of the foundational things. So recallers and Handling 360 are a phenomenal guarantee for an amazing agility dog down the road. Um, and then Agility Nation is more of an a la carte. It, so it's not the handling, it's the obstacles. And there's, a, there's um, things about mindset and, you know, other things that aren't handling are in the agility nation um, membership. It's a membership. So something new is added every single month. And we do, we, we rarely put these two together, but we do have them just for this week together. So you get both a year of agility nation, teach all the obstacles, we pulls, contact seesaws, troubleshoot any problem that you have. It is all there. Um, it's five years that you get access to five years of all the workshops that I've done that are in there. Um, plus I knew one every month on top of that. So you get all of that in a, just for the, uh, this week is um, 1297. And then for those of you who are really geeky, we have the inner circle. So that one normally um, is available for $4,000 for the year. And it's a, it's a very small group. So it's an application. It's not about how much, you know, um, it's more about how open you are to learning in a, in a different way. So it's a deep dive into the science of learning. It's a very small group, very private. So this isn't for everybody. Um, you might want to send in an email to ask more about if it would be right for you. Okay. So that's the puppy path. That's the guarantee. I would say that, you know, if you, if there's ever anything that could be a guarantee, then, um, that you are going to have success with your puppy, then those programs are it for sure. Um, we miss you too, Mary. Absolutely. Uh, homeschool the dog, if in recall, is it different content? So Mary, what homeschool the dog with a bundle, it would give you access to Wag Nation as well. So there are a couple of different games in homeschool the dog. Recallers is far, far more robust, but what you will get access is 
uh, I think you that you would really enjoy with your yeah I hate I'm not really little guy anymore right is Wag Nation for sure. Um, oh, so Sally wrote at the vet, my two year old just tried to bite after a shot. She's not having fun here today. It looks like muds or muzzle for future visit. Not necessarily, Sally. Not necessarily. It is relaxation protocol, counter conditioning. Um, you know, does the vet cut nails if like you need to start doing that at home and 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 frequent visits to the vet just to go in and and you know get have some fun in there, play recall or games. So you you know, I would not want to medicate or muzzle my dog at the vet. But I also I don't want any veterinarian or veterinarian assistant ever getting bit. I want puppies and dogs to love their veterinarian. My dogs absolutely go gaga over my veterinarian. Um, yes, Sarah, it will. Uh, so yes, I will. You know what? You guys know if you've been in recallers long enough, you know, I never, I'm, I'm always number one for my recallers community. So anything new I come up with that I'm going to give to new recallers, it's always there for all my recallers. That, that is a guarantee. Um, okay. Any other questions for me before we sign off? What should my puppy be working on or doing at 11 weeks of age? Okay. So if we go to this, probably you're going to be working on, you are at the, um, you've introduced their first cues. You've done uh, a, a lot of bond developing games. Husbandry is well on its way. So I'm introducing them to a very kind and reinforcing way to have their nails done and their ears cleaned and get drops in their mouth and, um, and you've, you've done, you know, you're probably, you're probably at game day nine, maybe, maybe 14, somewhere in there with recolor games. That's where you would be. And if you were somebody who wanted to do, um, sports with your dog and you have a puppy, this is a, this is important. What, how would I raise my puppies differently if my intention is to compete in sports this is the difference there isn't any because i believe the foundation of a phenomenal sport dog whether it be obedience or agility or fly ball or bite work or the foundation of a brilliant sport dog is the foundation that we put on to have an amazing family pet. It does not deviate. It changes around 11 months old in that we start adding sport specific skills. But the foundation, it's all about, their family pets way more years for us than they're ever going to be your competition dog. So please do not focus the first year of their life on the, on the skills that you think they need for sports. Let me tell you, I've excelled at the highest level of three dog sports. I've been on multiple teams that have set world records in fly ball. I have been uh, multiple high in trials it, with, with multiple dogs in the sport of competition obedience. And I've won multiple world championships and US national championships and Canadian national championships in the sport of dog agility. And guess what? Every single one of those dogs, the foundation was what's going to make them the most amazing family pet I could ever have. Because nothing is more important than the safety and confidence of our dogs in and out of our house. Nothing. Okay. That's my feeling on it. And you, you just, you're just not going to go wrong. You're not going to go wrong if you raise a puppy with that intention. Um, okay. So oh, more questions? Uh, a one-year-old border collie with high anxiety, my number one a piece of advice, nutrition. Change that first. And then what are the layers of learning and how solid can you fall back on any layer? Like if I'm working on teaching a dog a seesaw, 
how solid it is. Like the, the exercise part of my formulation when they're young isn't going for big long walks and throwing frisbees. You know what? My favorite, favorite piece, I'm going to give you a little bonus one. Susan's favorite exercise for puppies. Favorite. That is, once you've got crate games, which you all should have, then you get a plank. Do we have a plank up here? Probably taken down because the puppy's no longer a puppy. You get a plank a, a couple inches wider than the puppy puppy's hips. You make a raised plank and you work on a sit and hold position until they're released on that plank. Super difficult for puppies. And when they can get it and you can circle around them and they don't move their feet, they, that, that's a great core exercise, a ductor exercise. Then you're going to do it all over again in a down. Then you're going to do it all over again in a stand. So the exercise portion of what I do with puppies is all fitness. It's all skills that help build that dog's strength. Um, so where is the best uh, program to help with crate training? We have a program called Crate Games, but I would, um, we, it, Crate Games is also in recallers. Now, I, the Crate Games that is standalone is a little bit more robust. So if you really want thoroughness, you could get Crate Games and recallers together. If you want just one, you could start on Crate Games on its own. Um, Okay, my youngest beagle has been way challenging ever expected. I wonder if it's diet related. He mainly gets uh, high protein ziwi peaks. Dogs need a varied diet. They they should not be getting high protein. Um, yeah, I would change that dog's diet, and I bet you'll see a big big change in there in the level of anxiety you have. Um, what was that? Uh, where do you find the husbandry games? My last puppy, I had to talk to him to do the. Um, you'll see that in, in recallers, um, pedicure, pedi pedicure, please is in recallers is a standalone game as well, but pretty much recallers is like their Nirvana of dog raising, puppy raising, rescue raising, because we have the main recallers, but I'm so invested in our recallers community, having their dogs live their best life that I put in little offshoots. I put in pedicure, please, all about husbandry and emotional regulation, well-being, having their nails cut. And then I put in how to walk on a loose leash and, and I put in how to get your dog to, teach, to uh, come when called or webinars on dealing with distractions. And there's, yeah. So um, I have a brilliant little dog who's in Hanley 360 and Agility Nation, but we've run into trouble on me the measuring table. He's trying to nip the judge. What can I do to help him? We're working on standing calmly right now. He'll be two in January. So I'm going to give you another big bonus tip for everybody. Any time you have a training issue, you must remove the issue from the environment that you need it in. If I need my dog to stand on a table and be confident, Guess and and have and get measured. Guess what? I am not going to ever work on stand on a table and get measured. What I'm going to work on is have my dog sit and be touched in a sit position by different people that might look like judges, and then maybe put a ruler on him in a sit and in a stand. And I'm going to get confidence up the wazoo. If I have a dog who is you know fearful, at, I, I just take that out of of the environment where the fear is create safety. Number one dog, why do dogs nip? They don't feel safe. Safety. Number one, confidence. Number two, clarity of a behavior. So then I would teach them maybe a chin hold. So what can you do? Can you bite a judge when you're holding your head, chin on my hand? So there's just so many, there's a, there's a bunch of little bonus tips for you guys. All right. Um, any other questions? Somebody asked earlier on um, the best way to fly a puppy home with a traumatized Oh, what a great question. Um, the question was how to fly a puppy home. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you, um, I wish they could rent these. So number one, there's an ebook on our, on our, um, on our website and it's called, uh, I think it's called tips for flying your dog. Download that and go through that with great thoroughness. Number two, 
hopefully the puppy's small enough it can go in the cabin with you. If it's not, then get invest in, in a very well-built crate. I personally will never fly a dog in anything other than a gunner crate. Um, I, I have other crates for in the car. What are the names of the ones that I have in the car? Rough, rough land. I, I do use rough land in the car, but I will only fly my dogs in a gunner. So if I was flying a puppy home and it had to go in cargo, it would absolutely only be in a rough uh, in a gunner crate. Now, they're expensive, so that might not be a possibility for you. See if you can rent one or borrow one from a friend. But download that ebook and ask the breeder. The breeder can do a lot of things. Um, getting the puppy used to loud noises, putting the puppy, you know, in a crate on a wheelbarrow and taking them around the backyard. Like the breeder can be helping you out a lot here. So that would be a big, uh, big, big help to you. Okay, guys, I'm signing off. Um, uh, remember, our programs are open only until next Wednesday. And I promise you, it would be the best investment, not only financially, best investment of your time to grow your relationship and grow your dog, your puppy or dog's abilities and confidence and moving forward. You'll, it, it will, you will never regret this one. Um, don't question if you're going to be good enough. We have people who have never owned a dog before in every one of our programs and they are excelling. We make it easy. It's game-based. We make it easy for you to bring out the best in your puppy, no matter what your starting place is, no matter how you know brilliant your puppy may or may not appear to be. I had somebody say, I wanted to join your program, but I want to get my puppy better trained first. Let us help you get your puppy better trained first. I promise you that's what we're here for. Okay, I want to give away some stickers before we leave. And the share winner is... Karina Offman, Offman, all right? And if you would like to win, let's give away, um, so we're going to give away another uh, uh, restore bed. We're going to give away um, oh, a cooling pad. These are really cool, especially if you have to fly your dog. They're, they are made by Zentech, and they're this uh, kind of a fancy NASA insulated piece of, of dog bed that cools your bet your dog so we'll give a one if you want it to um be a uh i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up a picture so you can see what a zentech cooling bed looks like all right so if you would like to win a cooling bed then go to my facebook page and share one gem that you learned from today and i'd like to think there was more than one gem here for you. So share one gem. We're going to pick a gem. We'll pick two gem winners, give stickers to one person and give a cooling mat to another. And I'll do. Um, and what was that? Oh, we're going to do that next week. Okay. So there's a Zen tech mat and I will see you guys uh, impromptu on Sunday. That's it. Um, oh, and MM. We got an, are we giving away an MM? Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Okay. This changes everything. An MM is an invention that the people at Four My Merles and I came up with. And uh, an MM is like a double whammy because I believe all puppies should be trained with a long um, tug toy, a very, very long tug toy. And so like this would be a typical tug toy right here, right? This is your, your, your everyday um, tug toy. It's got some sort of fancy little ball on one end. But an MM is a long tug toy with two different toys and bungee and some. It's so for my morals officially right now. said they're giving away an MM. So we will do, we will do that for our, our share instead of the five we're going to do our, uh, next, next week. So on Sunday, I'm giving away an MM. You've seen it right there. They said I can do it um, Sunday for the share from this video. So if you're watching this on a replay and you want to share it and come back in here and say that, um, you know, I shared it here and put on social media, 
then you can win that MM that I'm going to give away Sunday. I'll show, I'll bring my MM too. So you can see what mine looks like. I've got a couple actually. Okay, guys, I'm signing off. Have a great afternoon.